All right, with algebra two and trig, we're doing 7.3 using functions involving E. We're looking at the natural base. Natural base of E, that is made by $1. multiplied by one, so it's it's 100% of what it is, plus it's getting 100% interest. And as N gets bigger, we get closer and closer to a magical number. So this looks very much like our compound interest formula. Where in our compound interest formula, we had an R value, which is our rate. We had our N value, then we had NT. But here with the natural base of E, we use our rate as 100%. And in our calculations, to reach the number that we're referring to, it's kind of like thinking that the time is one, the time is one year. When this happens, we get this E value, okay? And E is actually on your graphing calculator. It's in two different locations. It's above the division sign and it's above the natural log. It's E, so you can use either one of them. If you use the one at the natural log close to the four, it will give you an exponent option. Can you read that at all? So if we say e to the first power, we get 2.718218. So e is 2.718281828. Now that looks like it's repeating, but E does not repeat. Okay, in, in the long term, that doesn't follow a pattern that's repeating. E is irrational. E cannot be represented as a decimal. Like the number pi. That's irrational. Pi stands for 3.14. It's the number of diameters that fit around a circle. 3.14 diameters fit around a circle. You did that in geometry. Here, this 2.718 is related to this compound interest formula. All right, it's a little bit more complicated than diameters that fit around a circle. But it's the same idea. It is a constant number that does not change. Pi doesn't change. E doesn't change. So it's not a variable like X that keeps evolving and changing as the graph gets adjusted. Okay. So with the exponent rules, we can treat those in the same fashion that we've had exponents in the past. So we've got E to the five plus three, which is E to the eight. And here we've got 18, divided by two, you break these down into the individual parts, kind of like they're like terms. So you've got the 18 and the two, well, that makes nine. And then you have the same base, the E is the same base. So we are going to subtract exponents and that's gonna become two. Six minus four is two. So you got nine E squared. That would be the simplified form for example, number two.
And then for number three, when you're raising a power to the power, that's where we distribute in that too. Because this is not a binomial, we do not have a plus or a minus in between our terms. It's multiplication in there. That's called a monomial. So because it's a monomial, we can distribute this square in and it multiplies the exponents. It looks like the four doesn't have an exponent. If it's not written, we all know that the exponent's one. So we're going to get four squared and e to the six x. You square the four and you multiply the three x by two. So three times, or sorry, two times one and two times three. So this is 16 e to the six x. The X won't be squared because we are multiplying. So we're taking the three X and we're timesing it by two, right? This is three X squared, which means three X. <laughs> no, no, you are going to be correct because it's, um, nope, we're good. 6x. I had to think that one out there. I was tricking myself. Um, all right, now with the calculator. With a calculator, we can take e to the third power. So we know if it was two to the third power, that's eight. If it was three to the third power, that'd be 27. This is 2.718 to the third power. So it's somewhere between that eight and the 27. So that's where we get 20. And we're gonna round this to the nearest thousand. So the first spot is tenths hundreds, thousands. So you look at the 10,000 spot and you round up the previous number because that is a five or bigger. So the 10,000 spot is five or bigger. So we're gonna turn this thousand spot up a notch. So we're going to get 0, 0,8, 6. And then for e to the 0.3 power, we know that if it was e to the first power, that would be 2.718. This is less than one. So I would expect the answer to be less than 2.718. Just to start to give you an idea of what's happening, what does it mean? What's my approximated answer? Does it make sense to have this? So tens, hundreds, thousands. So you look at the ten thousands, and that's five or bigger. So that's going to make the number before it larger. Uh oh. When you make a nine bigger, it becomes a ten, and the ten makes the four bigger. So we really get three, five, zero. Okay, now it's your turn to try some calculator problems or without a calculator and then a couple with the calculator. You can pause the video, try them on your own and then go ahead and check your answers. 
So we look at this first one and we say e to the negative three plus six, which is e to the third power. And then here, just like we had before, we're going to multiply each of the exponents. So this is four squared, which is 16. This is e to the sixth power because you multiply the e's. Now thinking back at it, when you raise a power to the power, that means you're gonna have two of the e's to the third power. And then you add those threes together and that's where the six is coming from. This is just a shortcut. So you don't actually have to add threes together. And this is divided by eight e to the fifth power. So two e. And then with a calculator, So we have e to the negative four. It's gonna be relatively small, 0 0.018. There's a tenths, hundredths, thousandths, ten thousand spot is not five or bigger. So we do not round up. So e, to the 0.36 is approximately 1.433. Seem good. All right, now. In terms of graphing, we're gonna look at a graph, y equals e, actually y equals a e to the rt. Looking down at the problem, the two is your A, like it always has been. This is the first time we're having an R value next to the X. And our base is the E. Now we know that the A value, that gives it a vertical stretch or a shrink, depending on the size of the X. But that's multiplying all the y values of the parent function. That gives you a vertical stretch in this case. Now the 0.6, the 0.6 is going to give you a horizontal stretch. Now this is 0.6. So a lot of people think that that looks to be small. But when we do our calculations, we have to do the reciprocal of 0.6. So that's six over 10, you can call that three over five, and we do the reciprocal of five over, to make it five over three. You would take that five over three and multiply it to all your X values. Of your parent function. So a little complicated seeming in there. Lots of decimals. I'm going to show you the graph right now just to make it seem reasonable of q e to the x. And because our base is bigger than uh, one, it's 2.718, it's the letter e. And of course, A is bigger than zero. We know that we have a growth, exponential growth. 
So when we're doing the y equals e to the x, that's what our y value, we're doing the parent function right now. We have zero, one, and negative one. When you plug in zero for x, you know that that makes e to the zero power, which is always one. Anything to the zero power is one. So this is two. Well, we won't have the two, will we? Will be zero, e to the zero power gives you a value of one. We know that e to the first power is 2.71. No need to be more detailed than that. And then negative one would be like the reciprocal of E, which is where we get our 0.36, or you could call it 0.37. In terms of plotting points, we don't need to be more detailed than that. That's probably enough. So we can plot our points. At negative one, we're up at 0.37. When x is zero, we're up at one. When X is one, we're up at 2.7. And you see our exponential growth. We labeled our graph. So it looks just like the graphs we've done in the past. So nothing new. It's just more with decimals, which makes it a little bit more challenging, more calculator dependent. Then we're going to multiply all those y values by two. So instead of going up 0.3, we're now going to go up twice that amount. amount. So that would be like 0.7. Point seven four, And instead of going up one, we'll go up two. Instead of going up 0.27, we'll go up like 0.54. So you see that it's going up at twice the rate. So this is y equals two e to the x power. So it's just an exponential growth function. Really all done the same way we've graphed all the others. The numbers are just a little harder to work with because they're decimals. The domain, when you're asked about the domain, you're looking for what values of X are in the table or could be in the table. What values of X do the graph cover? Does it cross? What values of X could you possibly type into the formula? Any of those questions answers your domain. And that's why we get all real numbers. Because our table could have gone up to two, three, four, 20, 30, 50, 1,000. You could plug a thousand in e to the thousand power. It might be kind of big. You can see in your graph, it goes up very quickly. It doesn't head to the side very quickly. The range, the range, you see that the graph is coming down. 
And when X gets a negative, the value of E gets smaller and smaller, but it's never going to hit zero. E to no power is zero. No number to a power is zero. So your range is always greater than zero for this case. Now, if it's greater than zero, we're gonna have an asymptote at y equals zero. That means the graph is approaching that line and that's y equals zero. So we wanna label that on our graph. Just like we have in the past. And the end behavior as x approaches negative infinity, the y value is going to approach a certain amount. As x approaches positive infinity, the y value is going to approach a certain amount. When we look here, we notice looking to the left that the graph is coming down and down and down and down, but it doesn't go down for, it does go down forever. Let's make that clear. It does drop forever. No matter what value of X you put in it, you'll get a smaller Y answer as you go to the left. But it doesn't go down infinitely. It doesn't go down below zero. It only keeps approaching zero. It's kind of a hard concept to understand. So it approaches zero it will never reach zero. Moving to the right, as X gets bigger, you can see that the Y value gets larger and it's approaching infinity. Okay, with that said, we're not gonna be graphing other E problems. So this year, you do not have to graph the E problems. All right, we'll call it a COVID excuse. Um, up here in our filling ins, the graph of a function has a horizontal asymptote at y equals zero. If A is greater than zero and the R is greater than zero, then we have an exponential growth function. If R is less than zero, if it is a negative, then you are going to reflect it across the Y axis. So if you look down here, if that was a negative R, it's going to reflect across the Y axis and it'll become exponential decay. But again, for this 2021, we are not going to graph exponential equations. They are just like, well, we are graphing exponential equations. We're not doing them with base of E. Okay, just to try to make it a little bit more reasonable. So that means we're not going to need to deal with this guy, or we're not going to have to deal with that guy. You can imagine what these are about. This has a two, so you know there's a vertical stretch. This has a 0.7 for the R, so you know that there's going to be some stretching or shrinking. It happens to be a stretch in a horizontal direction. And there's a translation of three up. So it follows all the same rules you would have done before. So that brings us down to continuously compounded interest. 
And that has its own formula. A, as in your account, your account is going to equal PERT, the PERT formula. P stands for principal. The R stands for your interest rate. And we're gonna express that interest rate as a decimal. That's a common mistake that people make. They don't change it to a decimal. So we look here and we have a saving, you're saving for your first semester of college. You're gonna deposit $3,500 into an account. That makes 4% annual interest. And this is to be compounded continuously. If it was compounded once a year, we wouldn't need our fraction at all. Let me show you what I mean by this E. If we go to Y equals and we take our $1 and we're gonna get 100% of that $1, plus we are going to get 100% interest um on that compounded larger every time we do our calculation raised to our x so that is our equation that we had on the first page so when we look at our table for that When X was one, it can't be zero because you can't divide by zero. But when X is one, we got two, just like we had before. And then you start to notice as X gets bigger, when you start to divide the one by a larger number and raise it to a larger power, it starts growing to a value. The Y value is getting bigger. How big is it gonna get? We can change our method here. We can go to table set. We can start at one and we can grow by two hundreds. Now you go to your table and you watch it grow by two hundreds. Okay, so what is that looking like? That's looking a lot like 2.718. And as we get closer and get farther, this value is turning into E. So that's where E comes from. When you make that denominator bigger, we get closer and closer to the value of E. And this is a representation of being able to show where that E value comes from. Here, we are compounding continuously. So not even by the crazy number that we had in our calculator, but we're compounding continuously, so we're going to use E to the 0.04, because we have to move our decimal spot over two to represent it as a decimal. 
and we're doing this for one year. What is our calculation after one year? So we have 3,500 E, you gotta be sure you use the E. People sometimes forget that the E is important here. 0 0.04 times one. And that, that grew a little bit. But remember, this is just free money. You're not putting in extra time. You were just letting it sit in there and you get 3,642.84. And then we're gonna let it compound for five years. So we still have the same interest rate and we're letting it compound for five years. So we drop in our five and we get 4,274.91. So now you go ahead, you can pause the video and you try the last question for your turn. All right, we're here for our last one. We would have A equals, 4,800, that has an interest rate of 6.5%. It's compounded continuously. So that reminds us that we're using this PERT formula. If it was compounded monthly, we would go back to the compound interest formula. But this is compounded continuously. So we use this PERT formula with the E. Interest rate would be 0 0.065. That's probably the trickiest part. Don't put in 6.5. And we're doing it for three years. So that's approximately, it's not exactly, but it's approximately 4,800 E to the 0 0.065 times three, because we're doing it for three years. 5,833.49 cents. That interest rate really helps out. 